The Kraft Foods Company presents Willard Waterman as the Great Gildersleeve. The Great Gildersleeve is brought to you each week by the Kraft Foods Company. And Kraft, you know, brings you the famous cheese food, Velveeta, the delicious pasteurized processed cheese food with a fine cheddar flavor that's wonderfully rich, yet delightfully mild. You can be sure it tastes wonderful because Velveeta is made by Kraft. And for years, the name Kraft has meant the very finest in cheese and cheese foods. So next time you're shopping, be sure to get Velveeta. See for yourself how unusually delicious it is. And remember, only Kraft makes Velveeta. Well, the great Gildersleeve, his family and friends hope all of you had a Merry Christmas. Everybody at his house did. The tree was never so gaily decorated, and St. Nicholas never more generous. Oh, boy, a hockey stick. And shoe skates. Thanks, Unc. You don't thank me, Leroy. Thanks, Santa Claus. I sure thank you for all my loot. <laughs> well, you deserve it, Bertie. You've been a good little girl all year. Yes, sir. Unky, look what Bronco gave me. Yeah, look, Mr. Gildersleeve. Well, a quilted rope. His thoughtful husband. And slippers to match. Blue satin. Ain't that pretty? Well, the baby's coming soon, and we want the little fellow to be proud of his mother. <laughs> yeah, that's right, my boy. Oh, Bronco, you're the sweetest husband in the world. Oh, Marge. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you are sweet. Hey, sweetie, what did you give me? No, Leroy. <laughs> it's in that long package, Leroy. Oh, yeah, the archery set. How'd you know? You haven't opened it. I opened it last week. <laughs> <laughs> you would a boy. Miss Gillespie. Yes, Bertie? Here's another big package for you that came yesterday. You? Who brought it? Santa Claus. <laughs> you mean Santa Claus came twice? Yes, sir. This time in high heels. <laughs> oh, my goodness. We were told to hide it from you, Unky. Mm, I got my gift from Catherine. Who sent it? One of your secret admirers, Unc. Huh? Yofer. Yeah, I don't have any secret admirers. Oh, yes, you have. <laughs> Open it, Unky. Well, I guess I'd better. It sure is not fancy. Hey, it's an alligator. It is not, Leroy. It's an alligator suitcase. Say, this is a pretty expensive present. Silver fittings inside. Oh, it's lovely, Unky. Uh, here's the card. To Throckmorton with love, Vicky. Vicky. That's love, all right. Alligators don't come cheap. <laughs> You're all right, Bertie. Bronco, your Aunt Victoria shouldn't have done this. It's very embarrassing. Well, didn't you send her something, Unky? Well, yes. A Christmas card. <laughs> and she sent you love in an alligator bag. <laughs> Bertie, this isn't funny. In fact, it's getting serious. <laughs> Mr. Gildersleeve. Yes, Bronco? Marge and I are driving over to my folks' house. I'm not too anxious to bump into your Aunt Vicky until I figure out what to do about that gift. Oh, forget it, Mr. Gildersleeve. Aunt Vicky just likes to be nice to her boyfriends. Well, I've only been out with her a few times. I'm not her boyfriend. Mr. Gildersleeve, when Aunt Vicky decides you're her boyfriend, there isn't much you can do about it. But... She likes you, Mr. Gildersleeve. Well, I like her, too. But I've been going with Catherine for quite a while. And I won't let anything come between us. Ho, 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 ho. Well, I mean it. I'll get it. I'll get it. I'm right here. What a noisy family. Hello. Yeah. I'll get for you. Yeah, thank you, my boy. Bronco's Aunt Vicky. It is? How are you going to handle it, Uncle? Tell her you're going steady? Be quiet, Leroy. The receiver's off the hook. I know. I want to see how you get off the hook. <laughs> Leroy, 
boy, if it wasn't Christmas, I... Hello, Mickey. Hello, Throckmorton. You Merry Christmas. And I want to thank you for the alligator suitcase. And I want to thank you for the Christmas card. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I haven't sent out all my presents this year. Yeah, I often do it that way. Send out a card, then surprise them later with a present. <laughs> Leroy, why don't you go skating? Okay. What an operator. <laughs> now then, Vicky, as I was saying about sending you a present. Why, Trot, Morton, you don't have to send me anything. When I like somebody and give them something, I don't expect anything in return. No, Vicky, you'll have a New Year's surprise. I will? What's it going to be? Oh, tell little Vicky. <laughs> well, I can't tell you. I don't know myself. <laughs> uh, what am I going to do about Vicky? The one thing I've got to do. Let's get her a New Year's present. Well, good old Peavy will help me out. Hello, Peavy. Yeah, hello, Mr. Gildersleeve. What can I do for you today? Well, I have a, a gift to buy, Peavy. A gift, you say? Well, Mr. Gildersleeve, Christmas was last Monday. Yeah, I know, Peavy. I still have to buy a gift. Forget somebody? Well, it isn't the case of my forgetting. It's the case of somebody else remembering. How's that? Yeah, you know, I got an alligator suitcase from a secret admirer. My, my. It is very embarrassing, Peavy. Now I have to buy her something. Mm, very well. She's Miss Vicky Chase, the Bronco's aunt. Oh, yes, an attractive woman. Well, yes. But she doesn't understand that I'm interested in Catherine Milford. If she gave you an alligator bag, I'd say she understands pretty well. <laughs> well, she's getting to be quite a problem, Peavy. <laughs> she calls me at home. Calls me at the water department. She calls me at... Excuse me, Mr. Gilbert, the telephone. You can go right ahead, Peavy. Peavy's pharmacy. Yes. Yes, he's here. It's for you, Mr. Gilbert, please. Yeah, thank you, Peavy. Hello. Rock Martin, this is Vicky. Oop. Peavy, why didn't you tell me who it was? You didn't ask me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I didn't ask him. Hello, Vicky. I thought... Well, you found me. <laughs> I'll bet you're still looking for a gift for little Vicky, you naughty boy, you. Well. Really, Throckmorton, I don't want you to buy me a thing. But if you insist on spending money on me, why don't you spend it on both of us? Who's that? Well, I see there's a big New Year's Eve dance at the Palm Room. You will. If my little gift of a genuine alligator bag with sterling silver fittings makes you feel obligated, why don't you just take me to the dance? You, but... I wouldn't dream of suggesting it, but I'm only trying to help you get this off your mind. Oh, yes. Well, Vicky, I may have to work at the water department. Oh, what could you be doing at the water department on New Year's Eve? Well, with all those parties going on, they use a lot of water. Yeah, I'll be in touch with you. I'll be as close as your telephone. Yeah. Well, goodbye. Goodbye, Trot Martin. Oh, Peavy, I don't know why that woman keeps after me. Neither do I. I guess it's just because there aren't many eligible men around. That could explain it. Well, I have to get her off my neck somehow. I have a date with Catherine New Year's Eve. Who is that? Looks like your neighbor, Mr. Bullard, parking his Cadillac out front. <laughs> Look at that stuffed shirt. Bumping those other cars around to make room for his. Yeah, he made it. it. I think he's coming in here, Peavy. Good. Mr. Bullard's a big spender. Good morning, Peavy. Well, hello, Mr. Bullard. Oh, hello, Gildersleeve. Hello, Mr. Bullard. You were a little rough on that car out there, weren't you? Was I? It's none of my business. True. <laughs> <laughs> well, what if you dented his fender? I'd buy him a new car. You. I wish he'd dent my fender. <laughs> uh, give me a box of Coronas, Peavy. Very well. Uh, you care for a box, Mr. Gildersleeve? No, thanks, Peavy. I'll give him a cigar. It's Christmas. 
Hey, I'll take two. New Year's is coming up. Have a nice Christmas, did you, Mr. Bullard? On the contrary. With Marshall at Harvard and little Craig away at school, I was very lonely. It is too bad. I looked at myself in the mirror while shaving, said Merry Christmas, and that's all there was to it. Well, at least I had Mrs. Peavy to look at. You're a very lucky man, Peavy. Well, now, I... Maybe I am. <laughs> For me, I suppose New Year's Eve will be just as uneventful. New Year's Eve? Mm -hmm. Say, there's no reason for a wealthy widower like you to be lonely on New Year's Eve. What's this, Gildersleeve? Why don't we ring out the old year together, Bullock? We'll get a table at the palm room. Just you and me? <laughs> no. We'll get dates. Dates, Gildersleeve? Ladies. <laughs> but I haven't given a thought to anything but stocks and bonds for the past seven years. I don't have a lady to escort. Well, I have too many. Yeah, I mean... Uh, yeah, I'd be glad to introduce you to one of the attractive girls I know. The alligator woman? <laughs> well, what do you say, Mr. Billy? Well, it's an idea, Gildersleeve. You bet. New Year's Eve, charming company, balloons, beautiful music. Yes, yes. Perhaps I should start 1951 by breaking out of my cocoon and living a little. Good. Now you just leave everything to me. Thank you, Gildersleeve. It's very nice of you to share your friends with a lonely man. Very unselfish of him, isn't it, Peavy? Well, no, I wouldn't say that. Peavy! <laughs> Great Gildersleeve will be back in just a moment. These hurried days when you're busy with holiday plans, you probably have need of a lunch or supper main dish you can fix as quickly and easily as possible. So let Velveeta be your handy helper. Kraft's pasteurized processed cheese food, Velveeta, can help you many wonderful ways. You can slice it thick for hot sandwiches with a delicious cheese flavor, Toasted till Velveeta is melted to a bubbling gold, then topped off with slices of broiled tomatoes and strips of crisp bacon. Mmm. Now, that's an easy dish that's tempting and really good. For Velveeta has a grand cheddar cheese flavor, one that's rich and yet delightfully mild. And sandwiches you make with Velveeta are good for the folks, too. Good for all of them, from the preschoolers all the way up to Grandma. Because Velveeta is so rich in important food values from milk that everybody needs. And it's digestible, just as digestible as milk itself. Put Velveeta on your shopping list tonight and make Velveeta your handy helper all through these busy days to slice thick for hearty hot or cold sandwiches, to spread for snacks, and to melt for a smooth as velvet cheese sauce. Just be sure you get genuine Velveeta. Remember, there's only one Velveeta, and it's made only by Kraft. Great Gildersleeve has many things to be thankful for, not the least of which is getting his neighbor, Mr. Buller, to take Vicky Chase off his hands New Year's Eve. Now he's bragging about his clever maneuvering as he drives Judge Hooker home. Uh, pretty shrewd of me, eh, Judge? Well, it's nice of you to share your lady friends, Gilder. Yeah, of course, they'd both rather be with me. <laughs> you would I'll pair off with Catherine and let Vicky have Buller. What do you think of that? I think Vicky's getting the best of the deal. <laughs> sure, sure. You can't rip me, Horace. This whole thing has worked out wonderfully. And I'm the one who worked it out. I hope so, Gilde. But Rumson Bullard is a handsome man with wealth and position. What if he decides he likes your little nurse better than he likes Miss Chase? Right, George. If he does, he'll need a nurse. Well, Rumson is competitive by nature. He takes what he wants. And he usually wants what the other man has. He wouldn't dare. Gilday, why are you turning around? Yeah, I'm going by Catherine's house. I'm going to make it clear she's going with me. <laughs> Judge, you wait here. No, I'll go in with you. But I'll only be a minute. It'll take longer than that. I see she has mistletoe over the door. <laughs> Yelper. Hello there. 
Hello, Catherine. Good afternoon, Miss Belford. Merry Christmas and Happy New Year. Thank you, Judge. I thought I'd better come out and see why you two didn't come in. Well, I just stopped by to make it clear about tonight. Make what clear? He wants to tell you that he'll be your beau and that his other girlfriend can have Mr. Bullard. Judge! Oh, Throckmorton, you're so amusing. Isn't it? <laughs> you will, Catherine. I just wanted to make it clear that you'll be with me. Of course, Throckmorton. I naturally assumed that. You're eight. Five. Everything's rosy. Well, here's Mr. Bullard. Bullard? Why is he stopping? Hello, Gildersleeve. Judge? Hello, Mr. Bullard. Good afternoon. I'm glad I saw you, Gildersleeve. I bought a new car just for this evening. <laughs> well, fine. Isn't it beautiful? Gildy, aren't you going to introduce Miss Milford? Yeah, I guess I'd better. Uh, Miss Milford, you remember Mr. Bullard? Yes, how do you do? How do you do, Miss Milford? He'll be at our table this evening with his date. Oh, I, are you going to be with us, Miss Milford? With me. <laughs> Well, well, this looks like a jolly party Gildersleeve has arranged. Doesn't it? <laughs> yes, it does, doesn't it, Gildy? <laughs> All right, Judge. Well, goodbye, Bullard. See you tonight. Oh, yes, indeed. And I'm looking forward to seeing Miss Milford. Thank you. Goodbye, Miss Milford. Goodbye. Bye, Gildersleeve. Goodbye. Goodbye, Judge. Goodbye. Goodbye, Miss Milford. You said goodbye. <laughs> Uh, thank you, Bertie. Now you're all set for the night. Yeah, I guess so. Mr. Gilsey, you don't sound very happy for New Year's Eve. Well, I... Hmm. My vest's getting a little frayed around the watch pocket. Yes, sir. I stitched it as best I could. Yeah, I suppose that bullet will be wearing a new tuxedo to go with his new car. <laughs> Mr. Gilsey, I believe that man's got you worried. Bertie, I'm not worried. No, sir. Actually, I very cleverly arranged it so that he's helping me out. Yes, sir. He's taking Miss Chase off my hands so I can be with Miss Milford. Yes, sir. The fact that he was attracted to Miss Milford doesn't mean that she likes him. No, sir. What if she does? That doesn't worry me. No, sir. Competition's good for a man. Yeah, that's right, Bert. And you got it. <laughs> <laughs> no, Bertie. Yes, sir, you've got new competition. Yeah, all right, Bertie. Tonight you're going to ring out the old year by bringing a new competition. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir, tonight you're going to ring out the old year by bringing a new competition. Bertie, please. Mr. Gilson, you know what you're going to do tonight? Yes, Bertie. That's right, you're going to ring out the old year by bringing a new competition. <laughs> 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 well, what's going on, Mr. Gildersleeve? Yes. Anki, what was Bertie laughing at? Me? In my competition? Oh, poor Anki. I wouldn't worry about Mr. Bullard liking Catherine. Yeah, I'm not, Marjorie. But I'll worry if Catherine likes him. <laughs> you, what are you laughing at, Bronco? <laughs> you have no problem, Mr. Gildersleeve. You haven't I? When I was courting Marge, I was faced with a very similar situation. You? A fellow named Wally Hoff thought he sort of liked Marge. Oh, Bronco. Until I pretended I liked his girl. Then Wally sprang back to her like a rubber band. <laughs> so that's what you were up to. Well, it worked, didn't it, Marge, honey? Any regrets? Oh, of course not, darling. <laughs> you may have something there, Bronco. Yes, sir. The way I see it, Mr. Gildersleeve, Mr. Bullard's interested in Miss Milford because you are. You grabby neighbor. Now, if you pretend you're interested in Aunt Vicky, he'll try to beat you out there. He might. That's his Achilles heel. He's a heel, all right. <laughs> if I play up to his date, no, I wouldn't stoop to that. Wouldn't I? <laughs>
Do you mind, Catherine? We'll lead the way. You follow us, Bullard. Vicky. All right. Very well. Yeah, our table's in that dark corner. Isn't the palm room lovely tonight? Yeah. You're lovely too, Catherine. You don't mind if I'm not too attentive tonight. I'm using psychology. Psychology? Yeah, I'm setting a bear trap with a blonde. Watch this, Gildersleeve. Yeah, we, uh... Yeah, I was just wondering if the bare backs will be tickled by the palm. <laughs> oh, you would think of that, Throckmorton. Oh, isn't he a lot of fun at a party, Mr. Bullard? That remains to be seen. <laughs> you sit here, Captain. Thank you. Bullard, hmm? you over there, <laughs> under the coconuts. <laughs> Thank you, Gildersleeve. And you here, Vicky. You're right. You're beautiful this evening. Oh, Throckmorton, you're a flatterer. You know I'm not. You're lovely. Take the word of the water commissioner. Drain pipe Casanova. <laughs> uh, Miss Milford? Yes? You're even more captivating tonight than you were this afternoon. Oh, Mr. Bullard. <laughs> well, uh, Vicky is more captivating tonight than she's ever been. Oh, uh, Miss Milford, do your duties as a nurse allow you much time for recreation? Well, I'm afraid I spend most of my time at the hospital. <laughs> uh-huh. Uh, how does a man in perfect health get admitted to your hospital? <laughs> <laughs> oh, brother, I'd better get busy here. <laughs> hey, Vicky, huh? would the charming Miss Chase care to dance? Why, I'd love to. It's a grand evening, Gildersleeve. I've never enjoyed myself so much. Yeah, I can see that. <laughs> uh, Vicky, I don't want to take you away from Mr. Bullard, but you're such a good dancer. Well, he doesn't seem to mind. No, he doesn't. He spent all evening mumbling sweet nothings to Captain. Oh, so, oh, huh? Mr. Bullard. <laughs> well, <it's true. laughs> yeah, sure, sure. <laughs> you Ronco psychology had better start working. <laughs> no, no, no. Uh, Mr. Bullard? <laughs> what? I say, Vicky and I are going to dance again. Unless you'd like to dance with her. She took from Arthur Murray. Well, go right ahead, Gildersleeve. Uh, we'll sit this one out. Uh, well, shall we sit with them, Vicky? Well, perhaps we should, Throckmorton. We haven't been too sociable except with each other. Well, they haven't been very sociable either. You know, for a man to be lonely. I know. Oh, he certainly is an attractive man. I enjoyed the one time he danced with me. You're fine. I wonder what they're talking about. Oh, Catherine, I want you to know this. Then. Oh, well, you... Ooh, I've got to get him interested in Vicky. Maybe he'd take notice if I started mumbling to her. Vicky? I <laughs> About. I don't know, but it isn't working. <laughs> what isn't working? Shh, I'm trying to hear something. Oh, Rumson, you're just saying that. No, it's Rumson. I wish a coconut had fallen on his head. I promise that I can see you very soon, Catherine. Yeah, right, George hasn't gone far enough. Bullard! Yeah. What now, Gildersleeve? Yeah, I'd like to have a word with you in private. Gildersleeve, if it's about the check, stop worrying. I'll pay it. <laughs> it isn't about the check. Please step behind the palms. Very well. Um, excuse me, Catherine. Miss Chase. Oh, of course. Is anything wrong, Rockmore? Nothing I can't handle. Come on, Bullard. Gildersleeve, let go of my lapel. Bullard, prepare to defend yourself. <laughs> From what? <laughs> From me. You're trying your best to steal Catherine. I'm stealing Catherine? Ha! I was to have escorted Vicky to this party, and what have you been doing? You've monopolized her the entire evening. Yeah, all right. Did you expect me to talk to the palm trees? No, just a minute, Bullard. You were just talking to Catherine. You were flirting. You were being pretty cute with Vicky, too. Well, I had a reason. So did I. You... You did? Oh, if you're so stupid that I have to explain it to you, Gildersleeve, I've been trying to make you jealous. You, 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 me? Jealous enough so you'd take an interest in your own date. Wait a minute. 
That's what I've been trying to get you to do. Then you've been waiting to dance with Catherine? And you've been waiting to dance with Vicky? I thought you didn't care for her. Perish the thought, Gildersleeve. Vicky and I have a great deal in common. We both like money. Uh-oh. 12 o'clock, Gildersleeve. I'll see you later. Oh, Miss Chase, Vicky, here comes Ronson. You bet. And here comes Gildersleeve. Catherine! Happy New Year. Yeah, happy New Year, Catherine. Kiss? Close your eyes. Gildersleeve will be right back. Where your family's nourishment is concerned, you don't want to guess. You want to be sure. That's why when it comes to buying cheese food, careful shoppers insist on Velveeta, Kraft's delicious pasteurized processed cheese food, because Velveeta is not only good to eat, it's good for your family too. Rich in important food values from milk that growing children and adults need. A nourishing Velveeta is as digestible as milk itself, and it's perfect for wholesome, good-eating snacks and sandwiches any time at all. No wonder Velveeta outsells all other brands of cheese food combined. Make it your handy helper, Mother. Velveeta, the quality cheese food that's made only by Kraft. Willard Waterman steps out of his role as the great Gildersleeve to wish you all a happy and prosperous New Year. We're glad that we have this opportunity to come into your homes and wish you all the joys and blessings of the holiday season. So, it's a happy New Year to all of you from the members of our cast. Kathy Lewis. Katie Milford. Shirley Mitchell. Vicki Chase. Gail Gordon. Rumson Bullard. Dick Crenna. Bronco. Earl Ross. Judge Hooker. Richard Legrand. Mr. Peavy. <laughs> and now, on behalf of the National Safety Council, here's a special message from our little family. Merrily Rob, our Marjorie. Let's all remember that traffic fatalities rise sharply this time of year. So keep your wits and windshields clear. Yeah, that's right. And here's Lillian Randolph. Bertie just wants to say don't speed. Drive slow in sleet and snow. You'll get there. <laughs> Good idea. And here's Walter Tetley, my nephew, Leroy. Ease up and I'll freeze up. Don't skid yourself. <laughs> very good, Leroy. So watch it, folks. We want you to be listening next year. And Happy New Year, too, from all the people behind the scenes. From Robert Armbruster and the orchestra, our fine writers, Paul West, John Elliott, and Andy White. From Ray Ferguson, our engineer, Monty Frazier, handling sound effects. From our producer-director, Frank Pittman, and Virgil Reimer for NBC. And, of course... These holiday greetings come to you, too, from our sponsors, the Kraft Foods Company. Their representative on this program, John Heaston, and the entire family of Kraft employees. Happy New Year, everyone. Good night. Here's a quick, pleasant way to make leftovers more delicious. Just add a little Kraft prepared mustard, and you'll add a lot of tang. Hidden flavors in boiled ham, sausage, most any meat, pop right out. Every bite tastes better. Now you can get two kinds of Kraft mustard. Salad mustard, delicately spiced for those who prefer a milder flavor, and Kraft mustard with snappy horseradish added. Have both kinds in your pantry. Then with every meat dish, hot or cold, just add a little mustard and you'll add a lot of tang. Kraft prepared mustard. Hear the Falcon every Sunday over this station. Check your newspaper for time of broadcast and listen next Sunday as the Falcon solves the case of the Rolling Stones. Listen for Groucho Marx next on NBC.